Like, can't they fight cis women? Yeah, they probably can. I mean, I don't see why not. And it's not, like, a great disadvantage they're putting them under, like people say. Nah. I mean, like, if you transition before puberty, you pretty much got, you know, same body strength as a cis woman, so... So, like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. But they also make arguments about bone density, because they say, like, estrogen just makes your bones, like, dense as fuck. Ah, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Me neither. What do you think of this, Roadcom? Are we talking about um, trans women in sports? Yeah, specifically in, like, fighting. So, my my take on this is that, like, we we just have to see, like, what, um, like, science says. I'm pretty sure there's, like, a certain amount of time, like, after HRT, where you're just, where your body is just, like, fucked. So, like, after, like, a year or so of being on hormones or whatever, you should probably just be able to play with women. Okay. Based. With, rather. That's uh that's my take. <laughs> my bone density. My bones. What's with conservatives like caring about women's like bone density? <laughs> that's really fucking weird. And their skull <laughs> obsession with the phrenology. What what's that? Like skull sizes of people? Uh, like, oh. Skull shapes and bone densities with these people. Yeah. And yet their brains are like the size of peace. <laughs> yet their brains are smooth as shit. Marble brain. <laughs> so what do, like, the three of us collectively disagree about or something, like... I don't know. Anything? Like... <laughs> <laughs> we already know that um, I'm based as fuck, so... Yeah, this is like the base department right here. Yeah, literally. We've assembled. This is... This might as well be an uh, Antifa meeting. <laughs> in a video. Yeah, literally. In before I... Stalin comes in and starts talking about the vanguard. <laughs> um, I can't, dude. Like, I guess I don't have any problems with, like, the vanguard intrinsically, but it seems like it It always just, like, historically devolves into this, like, aristocratic, like, like sectored off, like, basically another bourgeois, like, class with their own entrance interests like sure it sounds good in theory but i feel like it just doesn't work out well it it would have to be a very specific circumstance where it would like quote unquote work out you know yeah it's always conditions i just think it's inherently like a hierarchical method of doing a revolution yeah, that's that's my problem. It, it, there's this kind of like assumption that the the workers are dumb, and they can't like know they don't know like about their class interests or anything. Well, I would argue that the lack of class consciousness is a real problem. That might be True. what they're talking about when they say that. Yeah, but I don't think the vanguard is the way to do that because, like, especially now in America, because the right, you know, they propagandize like crazy. Yeah, we just need our own, like, we need to win the culture war. Right. But for some reason, I feel like all of our efforts are almost futile in a sense. Like, everything we do on the internet is kind of limited to the internet it seems yeah i feel that way too we need more people organizing yeah unironically critical of me by the way i sit inside all day <laughs> <laughs> but you know how it is yeah i do know how it is a lot of people I'm... do that <laughs>
just too many libs. Too many libs. It's always the libs. It's basically like the left. Okay, so like, guys, tell me if you agree with me on this basic political model. Um, All right. Something happens in society that reveals a problem with society. So then the left is like, let's fix the problem. But the right Mm -hmm. basically says, no, the thing that happened is the real problem or like the subject of the that's the problem. So obfuscate the actual problem and we're going to keep doing the thing that we're doing to exacerbate the problem until the thing is gone. I think more they say the problem isn't a real problem. Well, yeah, that's part of that process. The left is just, like, making shit up because they're, like, all mentally ill degenerates. And then the role of the center, though, is to let the right do that while paying lip service to the problem. Right, yeah. Like, (laughs) the neoliberals think that, like, the right and the left are, like, on the same level. And because, like, the right isn't compatible with like humanitarianism it it does like bad for political discourse well it's like they have to shift the framework so far away from like how a normal human would look at things to justify their arguments about the way that society should keep like going in this authoritarian direction Right, right. All this, like, flowery language about, like, the fall of the West and, like, degeneracy (laughs) and shit like that. It's all, like, cult language. Well, it's all return to a history that never really existed. Yeah. That's, like, the fash, like, thing. Like, that's, like, the thing. Indeed. But, like, I think that model works with riots. I think, like, you know, I think it works with police brutality in general. Like, because what I'm really talking about by fixing the problem is, like, improving people's material conditions. Right. But they don't want that. Exactly. Just keep attacking the scapegoats. And also, should be noted, the Bernie or Buster, like, hard, like, leftist types don't care about improving material conditions either. It (laughs) seems. They just care about their own individual pursuit of being correct in politics and as morally pure as they possibly can in their own minds. Right. (laughs) I hate Reddit progressives. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill myself if I have to interact with any (laughs) more. I don't know why I subject myself to it. It makes me hate myself every time I engage with these people. Maybe just don't then. Like, <laughs> I don't use Reddit like that. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I just go on and, like, say inflammatory shit just to, like, I don't know. I don't know why I do it to myself. <laughs> these people are so stupid, though. Well, Reddit is, like, full of tankies yeah yeah i think reddit is full of tankies i i mean it's definitely full of bernie or busters but i don't like i don't know where they fall on like the tanky anarchist divide i don't know i just uh it all annoys me but it it takes comfort in knowing that like they're all just people with opinions (laughs) yeah yeah none of these people have a platform because they'd have to have like a brain cell to do that. Yeah. Nice. Did you disappear without announcing again? <laughs> or are you disappearing now? I'm confused. Hello? Hello? Hi. You back? Pepe did nothing wrong. That's true. <laughs> Wait, you found my channel. Oh no, I'm just I'm just saying it, I guess, to get your attention. 
<laughs> well, what's your opinion about him? What's your What's my opinion on Pepe? Yeah, I love Pepe. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I love Pepe people. I do love Pepe people. <laughs> My mom got on to me the other day uh, for that. Like, I was, like, memeing with my sister, and I said, like, I love black people or whatever, and she was like, that's race. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to explain to her, like, the Jesse Lee Peterson, like, dumbassery. That whole situation. Yeah. Like, it's not black voice, I swear. <laughs> it's yeah, just not, one... yeah, it's just one, one racist black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he he thinks he's white on the inside anyway so he's the one white black guy <laughs> yeah he's uh one of the good <laughs> Pepe. They, they all do that all of us yeah. minority groups do that yeah it's just like a boot licking point winning thing to them some people are just wired to lick the boot they're just designed yeah. that way <laughs> um as a Vosh it's not a very good long-term strategy because, like, you keep, like, licking the boot and, like, you feel personally comfortable and then, like, you get killed in, like, a fashy concentration camp for, like, trans people or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have a good historical track record because, like, the Jews who did that all got murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, when hey, they start... I about my teacher in school. Yeah. Sorry, what? Right. When I was in school, my teacher used to say to make a list of people that were oppressed. And I put down Oh yeah. Blacks. I was here in the stream for that. Yeah. And I put down blacks, gays, and transsexuals. And the moment she got to transsexual, she said to me, Well, they must be very lonely and sad people to want to change their bodies and we're not gonna talk about them. Yeah, I I uh heard that bit in the stream earlier. That's pretty fucked yeah. up. Literally just oppresses us more. Like, <laughs> probably created a bunch I'm... of young transphobes too. Yeah, um, and I know that was in the early two thousands, but still, even back then, like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's like not a, that's not a time period excuse, in my opinion. Right. <laughs> I mean, like. It can be to an extent. Like, I don't necessarily blame people if they just, like, genuinely haven't been shown, like, the right way. Like, that, it, it can be a generational thing to an extent. Yeah, I just hate how ignorance is the default position. Yeah, it does suck. Like, that's can I say something that's um 100% factual? Hmm. Sure. Um... All transphobes are white. <laughs> All we white. have to say is, didn't ask, plus you're white. Yeah, plus, plus you're white. <laughs> that's been, um, I don't know, I feel like that's funnier than it should be to me. <laughs> I get way too much out of that meme. <laughs> I mean, like, I live in a small town, but like, all the transphobes I know have all been white, so... I really does say a lot. Makes yeah. Sense. Plus you're white. I mean, I am white, so <laughs> so I can say that. Right. Yeah. I have the um, plus your white card in my in my belt. Fucking Destiny, dude. The thing that bothers me about Destiny's use of that, it, I feel like he thinks it actually makes people mad. Like, I've heard him talk about this, and he'll he'll be like, I just love saying it because it, like, triggers all the fucking, like, stupid social with lefties and whatever. Like, I don't oh think it actually... Oh my god, no, fucking... because his idea of a lefty is a fucking construction in his own head. Yeah, I, I think it can, <laughs> like, um white nighty people like rim like i think it can actually trigger them but i uh, like <laughs> on on mass like it doesn't really make people mad i don't think unless they're like liberals yeah 
And Destiny's well, I, a liberal. <laughs> I think when he says lefty, I think he means liberals. No, he means like he he means socialist when he says lefties. Oh, oh yeah, he means like white college kids socialist. Yeah, That's his like whole his... idea of like oh the the bougie white college kid who thinks that they're the chairman of the CCP and like yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting, but, like, can I ask a question? Hmm. Yeah, what's up? Like, do you think transsexuals are an outdated team? I, I, personally, I do, because I don't think that gender is tied to sex in any way. Yeah, I agree. Because the thing is, like, when I was in school, I was, like, they never educated us about us, so that's what, that's the word I used to use. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, they should have told us about us. They should have told us about, like, transgenderism and shit like that, but we never did. Yes, uh, sex ed is a big issue right now. It's one of my, not favorite, quote-unquote, but it's, like, something I care about a lot. Like, I live in Alabama. Like, I didn't learn, I didn't know a gay person existed until, like, I don't know, I must have been, like, 15. Yeah, because when I was in school, they they pretty much told us in sex ed, you're either gay or you're straight, master. They never told us about, you know, bisexual, gender fluid, transgender... You know, like, and all that shit. You know, we never told us anything about We're just like, yeah. oh, you've gay. Yeah, I'm surprised they told told you about gay people. That's mighty progressive. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely need to fix sex ed, yeah. No, but I, I feel like it's always going to be behind, right? Because, like, teachers are boomers. Oh, I yeah. disagree with that. Because, like, I'm... Mask I was pretty off. offended by this because it, I was pretty offended by this because, because like most of the transphobia from teachers were like from female teachers and I was like like fuck him. You, you should understand a bit, you know, you should have more well more care about it, but you don't Like mask off. I'm like in college to be a teacher, literally. So like mm-hmm. um at least where I'm, like, going to college, like, the first education class I took was literally, like, the whole purpose of the class was to, like, educate you about intersectionality and, like, all of the progressive cultural stuff so that you don't become, like, a reactionary teacher. Right, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You're, um, the crazy liberal college is working. No, it is, though. Like, that's the thing. Like, back when I was a Jordan Peterson fan, I thought all this was crazy. But now I just realize it's correct. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're, um, you're helping the teacher problem. Yeah. Wait, it... you're, you're on your way to being one of the good ones. Right. <laughs> Who's just have a piece on the stream? What? Hmm? Just have a piece on the stream. Who is it? Oh, me? No, 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 never said a guy about us talking. Oh, um, in chat. Catch my look. I don't see. Yeah, we're having a little discussion about this here. Like, what's the opinion about men who want to have long hair? Because before I came out as drunk, I always hated having a fucking hair. In my town, it's like, oh, you're a man, you have to have short hair. And I, I always fucking. Oh, um. You're talking to catch my load, right? Yeah. Well, as we wait, um, hair has nothing to do with gender or sex or whatever. Yeah, and I, I was pretty offended about this because, again, this was before I came out as trans, but a trans woman in my town, she said, why have you got long hair if you're a man? You know, it's like, fuck, you're right. not trans. You know? Why can't, why can't you understand you? Yeah. It's like the question doesn't even make sense. It's like, why do you have long hair if you're a woman? Like, the only reason why you're yeah. thinking this way is because of norms. <laughs> yeah. It's absurd. I've always seen that fundamental cultural absurdity in traditionalist thinking about gender roles and shit. Yeah, it's it's crazy the extent to which some of this stuff is internalized like with the whole like right wing like femboy epidemic like it's so taboo for them that like they get off to it 
I've been what, arguing what with you, people on what Twitter. What is your opinion on fanboys? What is your opinion on fanboys? My opinion on... Hmm? Yeah, just want to know, like, what's your opinion on... Well, I think, and I was trying to say this on Twitter earlier, and I was getting, like, woke scolded about it. I think a lot of them would be trans girls, but they're transphobic. Well, I feel, I feel, that, to it, I feel that to it, like, an extent, because, like... Some of them, like, they just like to identify as a fan of a man, like, if that makes sense. Yeah, that like, some totally of them are, exists as well, yeah. Like, some of them are, like, close to trans, but at the same time, you know, it's like you can identify with fan of things, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily make you trans. Yeah, I mean, they're undoubtedly, like, people that, like, hate themselves on the right because, like, they just, it's internalized so bad for them and they think that they're, like, degenerates or whatever. But at the same time, I don't know if it's necessarily my place to, like, speculate about the gender identities of other people. Well, see, my point is just that, like, they might only think that they're still men because they think that all trans women are men, you know? So, like, if their perspective just, like, switched to the correct understanding of gender they would probably have like a realization a lot of them that like like specifically the transphobic ones that i'm talking about you know would realize yeah that, like oh yeah wait no i'm one of these people and like this is valid like this is a real thing yeah like i do understand that but i also think like some men like they just want to look like women they don't want to be women like they just want to look like them if that makes sense yeah well there definitely exists people whose gender identity is man and gender performance is feminine. Yeah. I'm just talking about, like, the transphobic femboys on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I right. Didn't think about it. I think that there's a large, like, there's a, there's a high degree of fluidity in a lot of people's gender that they don't really acknowledge just because it's like taboo or whatever and like because I, like um, they would fit into the norms better generally probably I'm sorry. oh because they like wouldn't fit in no but well yeah but more like also like they don't think about it that way because they fit into the norms otherwise yeah that's that's kind of what i'm saying like i i i present like pretty masculine like on a day-to-day basis but like sometimes like i just want to wear like a flowy like sweater or whatever and like that's chill I, I i don't know i just think that even um transgender people or like the left kind of tends to think of it still sometimes as like you perform as male or you perform as me female and i think there's a lot of gray area even if you don't call yourself like non-binary or whatever oh, i yeah. think it's yeah it, it's like a wide spectrum Everything you know, like, is in the spectrum, yeah. I think it's hard for people like me, you see, because I'm pretty much at the end of puberty. I'm like, my hair's thinning, and i got body hair all over me, and I just want to transition around. You know, when I was younger, you know, I could just, like, present as, you know, more feminine, and it was easy that way, but now I've got to put a hat on and shit like that. It's just fun. Yeah, like, right. If, if you know what I'm yeah, I'm sure that's tough. Yeah. I can't imagine, to be honest. Because you're older than me. Yeah. It must be hard. Gender is cringe. Exactly. We If we just didn't grow up with these expectations, we would be fine. Do you claim to be a woman? But you like the color blue. <laughs> Crazy SJW blown the fuck out. Basically, dude. A microcosm of their whole position. It's, it's quite funny because my two favorite colors are black and pink. <laughs> That's a badass combination, though. That's like badass femininity. That kind of, oh, yeah. I don't know. 
favorite color are we about to like debate color <laughs> what is there to debate about color okay so i okay this is my spicy hot take all right i think that what's your favorite color is a dumb question Be- because color is so um like there's no like catch all like good color like co- like color is heavily dependent on context. True. So when so when people ask me like what's your favorite color I'm like for for what? It, it's <laughs> like oh like catch all color that's just like good, you know? Well, I have a fav I have like favorite colors. But my problem with the question is like it's not specific enough. It's cuz like someone will say oh red, but it's like what shade of red though? Yeah. Like Color is like gender. It's spectrumatic. True. <laughs> do, yeah, but do you find like um, people who like the color black they identify with like the darker things in life because I personally maybe I'm not super sure. I don't know if there's a heavy correlation between like your favorite color and your personality. I think it's just like a you know. But I mean, if you want to look at it that way, that's like valid or whatever for your personal like. Uh, mm-hmm color journey well, but, it's, it's connected to the goth aesthetic so yeah and the goth aesthetic is like dying opulence which is why i like it <laughs> contra points <laughs> reference yeah i love contra so do i it's like the symbol of neoliberalism is like the goth aesthetic <laughs> I don't think so. No? You don't think Neo- that, like, represents the decaying of our capitalist age? Well, well sure. But I guess I don't associate color with um, emotional weight that much. I, I associate it more with just, like, kind of like a vibe. I don't know. When I think neoliberal, I think, like, gray. Like, light gray. <laughs> like, <laughs> like off-white. What'd you say? I'm sorry? But the, modern, the modern aesthetic. The modern aesthetic? Yeah. Hmm. I don't think there is a modern aesthetic universally. What about, like, like you know, like, futuristic? I, I think, like, a kind of like a chrome. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, my idea of, like, um, the modern aesthetic is sort of like, you know, like, Blade Runner shit. You know, stuff like that. You know, sort of like dark, but sci-fi and shit. Like that. Right, yeah. Let's see. Like chrome and like uh, electric blue or something. Well, yeah, like that, but like, you know, just like sort of noir, you know, like trench coats and, you know, just like shit like that. Yeah, I love know, like... big glowy signs in the, on the side of skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah if like, I yeah, had it that way. I'm sorry? And like black dresses, you know, like the character Rachel and Blade Runner, or like had a black dress, you know, like a 1920s hairstyle, stuff like that. Right. I don't know. I I feel like that era would be so cool to like be in. I love the music too, like the smoky, like I don't know that like that shit just gets me. Yeah. What a sexy. I always like I always liked Rachel off Blade Run. He was like my favorite character. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm familiar. Well, you never seen Blade Run? Uh, no. No. Oh. I haven't either, unfortunately. Well, the thing is, like, I I wish I looked like Rachel, but the difference is I got blue eyes and she's got like sort of like uh, hazel eyes. That's uh, that's like the only difference. I have yeah. hazel eyes. <laughs> hey, me too, comrade. <laughs> hazel eyes. They got tinted green. They um. They yeah, they 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 kind of change. Like they go from this like hazelnutty type, like uh, light brown to like kind of like a green gray. Sometimes it it's uh it's chill. <laughs> I get a lot of compliments on my eyes. All right. I mean, my favorite two eye colors are blue and green. That's my two favorite. I I do like hazel. Light. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, hazel is the best eye color. That's more of 
like my own personal experience because I got blue eyes. So, you know, I like other people with blue eyes. That's just like from my own personal experience, really. Yeah. Blue eye supremacy. No, I'm not being a blue eye supremacy. I'm just saying. Very un- <laughs> Very unbased. <laughs> I don't well, know. I feel like everybody that I've liked, or not every, but most people have been blue-eyed people. See, I don't really see like that kind of correlation. Like, I I feel like I just like pick people, <laughs> and if they have brown eyes, like you know, yeah, but, yeah. whatever. But the one thing, <laughs> the one thing about blue eyes is like really lively. You know, they sort of like shine and light and everything. You know, it's like yeah. sort of like angelic. Yeah. And get lost in it. True. Yeah. The only correlation between that I can draw between like my past partners is like they've been like depressed, I guess. Like they've been <laughs> mentally <laughs> like that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> I mean same kinda. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I do this to myself. I really know how to pick them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> But then again, so am I. Like, I'm one of those people. Yeah. I dated a Trump supporter one time. That was great. Oh, God. <laughs> I, think, um, I think my first girlfriend was a Trump supporter, but, like, it's chill because I was too, you know? <laughs> What's your opinion about trans Trump supporters? Trans Trump supporters, um, I don't want to be too hasty and say that they're stupid, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll say they're stupid. You know, all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are, you, you can say that cause you're trans. Right. <laughs> I, um, as, as a, as a white person, I am white, so. It's hard for me to speak on these issues. <laughs> Plus, you're white, Rokone. <sighs> Damn. Never thought I'd get hit with that. <laughs> People always tell me I look Jewish. Damn. Why? Because <laughs> I have, like, kind of a big nose and, like, curly hair. Oh, my God. Yeah, I... That's like yeah, I always got that. called Jewish in high school, and but like I don't even have any Jew in like my family. I'm just like a normal fucking like atheist. Jesus. But everybody's oh, like, you... <laughs> yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, I I actually like uh, women with, like Jewish look- looking losers because I think they look cute. <laughs> nice. True. I don't know if that's like being. You know, but like, it's just like, I think women with like a sort of like a Jewish looking nose, I think it's just cute for some reason. No, I think that's true. Like, I don't know, acknowledging preferences are okay as long as there's no like, you know, weird Jewish, <laughs> the Jewish question. <laughs> Wait, like, yeah, what because, do you guys like, think um... about like fetishism or whatever? Like, I, is, is because, a chaser a thing? Well, it's really or not? Because, like, yeah. Is it like, is it a what a, thing? A chaser. Oh, oh, like a like a trans chaser. Um, I don't know. That kind of fetishism seems really weird. Like, cause, because of like, they just like it because it's like taboo or whatever. Yeah, but, I don't know. I don't think that's true. Yeah, but like, what's the opinion about like a trans woman who only wants to date a? No one wants to date who? Like some trans women, like they're mostly attracted to other trans. Like some of them are. Like, yeah. What's the opinion? I think <clears throat> that is cool because trans lesbianism is praxis. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I think <laughs> dating someone just because they're trans is like kind of weird. Like from both sides. Even if you're both trans. Yeah. Even if you're both trans. I mean, I don't know. I feel like they're I mean, not they're... dating just because they're trans, though. Yeah. I mean, well, there's probably be something to be said for like. For instance, like liking dicks, but also like liking femininity. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing or is, like, like the thing is, like before I came out as trans, I uh, I mostly liked like other trans women. It might have been like a bit of a fetishy thing, but you know, like I'm trans myself. Right. It's yeah. Just, like, I mean, 
That's understandable. I feel like we can see each other's beauty. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, where other people might not... Because we see, like, the woman inside each other, I think. Because we see, like what we actually are better than cis people might be able to. Yeah, and there is something to be said for, like, being able to relate to your partner in, like, on, on that kind of level. Like, yeah, like, I knowing your experiences. Is... Alright. Hey, can, can I ask, like, a run? Yeah, what's up? Alright, what's what's the opinion about, like, uh, foot fair? Uh, like, people with a foot fair? Because... Like, like I had this debate. Like, I like like uh, other trans women, and people say to me like, "Oh, that's that's just like guys." And I was like, "Fuck off!" Like, what's your opinion about? That? Look, feet gang, rise up. <laughs> what? I I think you know having a foot fetish is chill. Yeah, but like people who are like, "Oh, if you like a trans woman's feet, you know that's just a guy's feet." You know, it's not fucking guy's feet. It's like that's <laughs> also cringe. That's because it. yeah, it's not a guy's fear. <laughs> God. Yeah, I don't like people generally, like as a concept. I don't know if I like people dating people just because of aspects of their their like identity. I think it can come off as a little bit weird sometimes. I don't know how often that actually happens, though, like... Well, I think there are definitely, like, straight guys who, like, have this weird thing about, like, fucking trans women. Like, I, I think that is a thing to an extent. Like, they want to be, like, someone's... They want to be, like, their first something. Like, oh, like, I fucked a trans girl or whatever. Yeah, well, I, don't... I think that has to do with, like, men using Taboo. sex as, like, a trophy also of, like, yeah, I fucked... Yeah. A trans yeah. girl, I fucked a blah blah blah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's also a big part of it. Well, the thing is, like, I, I sort of used to be like that before I came out as trans. You know, I just wanted to, like, you know, hook up with like another trans woman. Yeah, I don't. Think I mean, that's like, is it the same though? Yeah, but is that is that like bad? For... No, as long as it's all consensual. Yeah, and that's I feel like that's just like wanting to be some with someone who shares like similar experiences uh, to an extent. But like if you're like a dude who's like, "Oh, I want to fuck like a black trans woman because that'd be like really fucking cool to tell my bros or whatever." <laughs> like I Yeah, um, that is weird. Plus they're white. Plus they're white. So, like, is it one for, like, a to a trans Is it wrong to what? Put for, like, guy to lecture. You're, like, cutting out for me. Yeah, there's a little bit of that for me, too. Ah. I mean, like, it's like a white guy. Fuck a trans woman, is that wrong? Is it wrong for a white guy to fuck a trans woman? No, like, like a black trans Oh no, not inherently. That that's not what I was that's not what I was getting at with my um that's not what I was getting at with that analogy, no. no because I think like we should be more like interracial. True. I, I can't wait for us to all be beautiful brown like <laughs> make no, the, thing is, the thing is like it sounds like a bit of a hypocrite because I'm attracted to pale skin and blue eyes, not being like racial. That's like my natural attraction. But the I, I, also like, I, I also like being a black. Yeah, I mean, okay, I used to think that, and I used to be like, like, oh, you know, I just like the way like white chicks look more. But then I like saw some really fucking pretty black women, and I was like, damn, I'd hit that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for me, it's more like a natural attraction, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, like, I mean. Like, I- yeah, because, like, if you like pale skin, I'm just saying. But I don't know. I don't know how much of that is, like, cultural, though. Like, I guess, like, if your experience is just that, like, generally, like, black women are less attractive or whatever, or, like, whatever uh, race you want to use. I don't think that's cool. I just think, like, some <clears> people, you know, some people fear black, you know, some people fear, prefer, like, like uh, you know, really pale. It's just... Like... 
Sure, but I I guess I just have to wonder like how much of that is cultural or like um how much of that is like ingrained, like raised with Yeah, it all probably has to do with some kind of cultural context. <clears throat> Cuz like when you grow up, like we like uh Maddie was saying earlier, like we kind of live in the echoes of like puritanism. Like when you when you're growing up and you see like every single couple like your mom your dad your fucking neighbors your neighbors neighbors like when it's all like white couples you're like you might have less of a propensity towards like wanting to break that you know what i mean all right well, well without trying to sound racist do you know what i really like black women with blue eyes fucking gorgeous oh no i i know you're not being like fucking like weirdly racist like i've heard enough I, i've heard you talk enough to know that you're not being like yep. fucking about it. Do you ever um, think about it? Like, like a black woman with blue eyes. Black woman with blue, blue eyes are hot. True. Yeah. But that's only because they're more like the Aryan race. Damn. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, dis- yeah, disavow. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was my friend. <laughs> Lamau, that was my friend. <laughs> So, like, in an ideal world, you want it sort of to be, you know, a little bit darker. I mean, I don't want that, but I just know that that's going to happen, like, you know, in a yeah. few decades. The trick and is like, not, like, I want this. It's, like, just who cares about the ethnicity of the population? Like, it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, fuck. But Come on. The thing is, like, the thing is, like, you say, but, like, what about, like, you know, black men who, like, pale white women? It's like... I mean, yeah, their kids will be brown too. Yeah, but like, yeah. then like, if he's got no attraction to pale white women, then there won't be any more pale. And not trying to be racist. So. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with there not being any more pale women. Right. We just gotta enjoy it while they're here. Yeah, we just have to like fuck as many pale white women as we can before they're all gone. Before yeah. they're all by the like virile like bre- black seed. Right. Well, to tell you the truth, as long as there's blue eyes, I don't really care. Yeah, don't breed out the blue eyes either. We gotta <laughs> keep those. Keep eye diversity. Yeah. True. I feel like as someone with blue eyes, it's um, like you have a um, you have an obligation, like a cultural ob- obligation, to preserve that and only fuck people with blue eyes. <laughs> You need to preserve your culture. Pass it down. Do, all right. Do, do you ever think there's like uh, prejudice towards people with like different black skin colors? You know, you sort of get like your dark ones and then you get your little, your lighter ones. Do you ever think there's sort of like prejudice? Towards- Almost definitely. Like I see all these like I I've heard um this one um this one YouTuber I really like. Oh my god, um Kenya. Her her name is Kenya, and she talks about how like in like black quote unquote TV shows or whatever, it's always like these like um, caramelly like you know light brown women, and there's there's not a lot of like representation of like dark um, black women unless they're like grandmas or something. Like there's no like proper like dark skinned representation in the media, and I think that's a pretty big issue. Maybe not like an I. I Probably an issue, you know. I think there should be more representation for that. Yeah, oh, and I'm... yeah, there's definitely some kind of dark skin prejudice more so than light skin. Yeah. Also, there's this thing with like dark. Whenever there's a dark skinned woman in in the media, with with black women in general in the media, I feel like it's like a um, they're like someone's therapist or like there's their shoulder to cry on or they're supposed to be like strong and independent or whatever. And like, I don't know. Fuck that. Like weird racial, whatever. Like we just need more like normal black women in media. Yeah. And I think the trick is to make it like make identity matter in the story. If you want it to matter at all, make it matter in a way that comments on society as it is now and how it's like fucked, you know? Uh yeah, but also I feel like comments on society can also be a little bit destructive because, um, like, you can comment on society, but I feel like every time you have a black person in the media and it's, like, this whole, like, like uh, 
you know, story about oppression or whatever, I feel like that can be kind of overcompensating. I feel like if I were black, I might just want to see someone like being black in the media. Well, there's that as well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta have both, I guess. It's I'm like just um, saying like what how people use the issue of identity, like it should be purposeful. Yeah, can, sure. If they're gonna like, if it's not just like another character, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can can I add something to that? If it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is quite interesting. Um, you see, um, so I saw this picture of like a biracial woman, and she was quite light skinned, and she sort of had like a, you know like an Afro hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a picture of like this Latina um, trans woman. And she looked even more white. But when I compared the two pictures, you know, they were pretty much the same shade of skin. So I think, you know, a lot of this is like in your hair, you know, like white yeah. and black and shit like that. Yeah, I think it, I think it can be um, in your head to an extent. I think in the media, there's this almost like hyper woke, like overcompensation sometimes for people's identities. Like, I don't know. I don't like this concept that there has to be like a big reason for like having a black character or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like um, it's like the meme where it's like, oh, you know, you're you're black. You like you're so articulate. It's like that kind of thing. Like where oh, like if yeah, you yeah. if you if you catering, yeah. yeah if you try <laughs> like too hard to cater or whatever, then it comes. Then it almost like does the opposite. Like that's also like fucking racist. You hit like, the tipping point, and you realize like, oh, like I don't know that much about this. Like <laughs> yeah, they're well intentioned, but it's also cringe. It's it's libs being in over their head. Well, oh, did you ever hear about shit about the Last of Us Part Two? Uh, no, I didn't. I I mean, I I kind of caught waves of it, but I don't know exactly what happened. Well, no. well basically, like there's this big argument goes through a bunch of leaks saying like there was a trans character in the Last of Us Two. I mean, you got like all these fucking insults saying, "Oh well, I, I don't want to play as a trans character with this shit," and it turns out you know that character isn't even trans in the first place. That just shows like their own fucking transphobia. It's literally just yeah, a normal that's... girl, like. <laughs> yeah, that's cringe. Yeah, like you think that she's trans because she's like, and you think about it, you know, trans women, it's possible, and she's not even fucking trans. But it's like, oh, that character's trans because she's got a muscular build. I don't want to play the fucking trans character and shit like. That. Like it's this like hyper fragility. Like whenever there's like a black person in the media, all these like fragile white like reddit types like come out of the woodwork and like why would you put a character in just for being black it's like they didn't put him in like just for being black like why 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 yeah why are you because <laughs> their real problem is why'd you put in a black character at all yeah because it's like <laughs> what it, to them, to them, like white is normal, and then everything else is like woke, dumb SJW diversity. It's this shit. inability to see outside of the white perspective, which I actually know people who yeah. are like that. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. Can, can I say something else? Yeah, what's up? Right, the thing is, like, um. I'm not even sure if I want kids my own. The thing is, you know, when I do start hormone therapy, it's going to make myself sterile. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, I am sort of like struggling. It's just like, I mean, it's not from, you know, at the same time, it's just like, like, well, um, the, the science is coming along. Maybe, uh, maybe one day. What do you mean? Like you can fucking clone people from your blood? Or... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know much about that, but I think like um, in they're saying in a couple of decades, like trans women are going to be able to give birth. So yeah, but the thing about that is like we're talking about you know taking a female and giving a complete transplant, you know, like organ transplant. So you yeah. have to get like a, a deceased cis woman, and you have to extract a room, you know, surgically and then implant it, so that's, that's completely different, you know, from cloning someone from your blood and 
but yeah well i mean we already have like organ donors now like where like people can sign up for like when they die like you know take my fucking organs and do what you will so it might be like that kind of thing yeah but what i mean is you know when when you do become steroid you can't really pass on your genes except you know if we were in the far future if you extracted your blood and you made uh, i don't know, did it in a lab or some shit like that unless you freeze your sperm cells well, beforehand yeah the thing is like we haven't really got oh, yeah. in the uk so i can't do much about it. yeah <sighs> well i mean you um over there yeah, in britain are going to what? Plus, you have to find like, the surrogate mother. It's quite hard, as <laughs> Yeah. Um, Britain is going to be 30 years behind on trans issues, perpetually, yeah. though. So you might have to wait a little bit longer than I do. I really do so much because, you know, I just came out. It's just... Yeah. I don't know. Turf Island is cringe. Turf oh, Island you... is cringe. Who's, who's your friend on you? I forgot. I'm sorry? Your friend on you, what's his name? I forgot his name. My... F oh, me? No, no, The other person you... Um, I'm not sure who you're re referring to. Yeah, there's two people on you. you. You and someone else. Oh, there's me and there's Madeline. Oh, Madeline. Yeah, yeah I was... <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, ask that person. What's your opinion about uh, Rose of Dawn? Because we were talking about it, really, and it's like. Um, my opinion? Yeah. Um, Rose of Dawn is <clears throat> insecure. Yeah. And well, the thing is, puts yeah. down trans people to make herself feel more valid, I think. Mm -hmm. That's my interpreta yeah, but... interpretation. Well, frankly, like, I feel really sorry for her because I look at her, you know, she's just, you know, she seems so sweet and she's really pretty. I just think, like, she's completely misled. She should be on our side. Yeah, I mean, I feel that way to an extent, but also, like, it's hard for me to feel much empathy when, like, she's, like, people like that are, like, making their careers out of, like, shitting on other trans people. Like, that just makes yeah. me... Especially if she's not just misguided and she's, like, doing that on purpose, like... Yeah, like, I never really know. Like, someone can look, like, super pretty and sweet or whatever, but you really know, you never know what, like, they're thinking, right? What lies like, beneath. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there is that, like, you do, to it. sometimes they do, like, selfishly just want to be, like, one of the good ones, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. I didn't ask this question. Like, what's your opinion on Blair White? Uh, same, same feelings. Yeah. It's sad. Well, I wish that Blair White wasn't so fucking hot, so that I didn't have to like hate her, or so that I could that's, hate her. Because that's the thing. I, I do. Well, I don't mean I like. Like, I do sort of like uh, wish Blair White and Rose Dawn were on our side because I just think they completely misguided. If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know if Blair. I, honestly, I don't know if either of them ever will be yeah they i mean have to change their entire like online identities and brands everything well, will have I mean, to change i think it's like, to do with, like conservatism because that's what we both follow really yeah i mean it happens like hunter avalon you know um shoe on head is moving more in that direction like you can move over it just takes time well shoe on head that was like like, she said that she was critiquing what she called, quote-unquote, feminism, but she was really, like, critiquing liberal feminism, you know? Yeah. She's yeah. always been, like, populist left-leaning. Right. But, yeah, it's just hard, because you can never really know what like, their intentions are, and it's hard for me to grant so much charitability um, to people who build their careers on, like, such, like, authentic, like, hate. Right. Or, like, just, like, they, their careers are, like, on, like, inciting disgust in, like, trans identities, and that's, like, pretty harmful in my opinion. It's just hard for me to, like, accept that. 
like beneath the eyes of like being sweet or whatever they care i guess they're throwing the rest of us under the bus for their own personal well-being yeah Without going over racial, like, do you, do you wish that maybe no white people in the future? Is that, is that, is that what you want? Do I what? Do you wish that there were no white people in the future without being like racial? Um, unquestionably, comrade. No. No, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, I think it's going to happen, but I don't, I don't really care about how many people are white. Because, like, the definition of white has changed so much over time. Like, when people used to say white, they meant, like, like fucking um, Aryan or whatever, or, like, Nordic. Um, yeah. Like, but now we've got everybody in, in there, you know? We've got, like, the Germans, the Slavs, like, everybody's white now. Yeah. And it's, like, how much of that is going to be, like, I don't know. Like, I just don't care about what white yeah. is. I don't care about... It's quite interesting because, like, you can get a Greek that's, like, you know, really tan. I mean, you get a Greek that, you know, looks pretty Nordic with blue eyes. It's just like... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if right, you know that, that, but it happened. Right, yeah. And I, I I just don't care about race that much. I mean, I don't hate them, the same. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know. I just... I don't care about, like, demographics of, like, people in the future or whatever. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me. The thing is, like, people are worried about, like, uh, white genocide. But then I was like, well, the... <laughs> there can be like a few white people in the future. I mean, like you look at Greeks; some of them are like really, really tan. Some of them are look fucking Nordic with blue eyes. I mean, like there can be a few yeah. in the future. Yeah, yeah we need to. Do I mean. We need to keep four hundred white people in their own <laughs> um, ethno state, yeah. so that we can keep having white people to like jerk off to. That's I'm like free to jerk off. I'm free and jerk off. <laughs> yeah, sure, because um. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just memeing. <laughs> yeah. Out of those 400 white people, 300 of them should be trans. <laughs> True. My True. God. We're all, it's, it's only getting more based in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the based meter is turning up. You like. That's what we love to see. That's. Like, like, do you have a problem with me talking about, like, race and shit like that? No, not at all. Um, I, I'll talk about anything. Because, because I, the thing is, like, you know white people get a bad rep. Like, do, do you ever feel like you feel sorry for, you know, like, white trans people? Because I do. Not really. I think that, um, I don't know. Are you talking about, like, white guilt? No, I mean, like, you know, when people discriminate against, you know, trans people, um, they're also white. But they discriminate against them just because they're white, just because they're trans. I feel like I've never seen this, like, white trans discrimination thing. Like, I, I, no, I don't I mean, know. Like, like, it's transphobia in general, but, like, the people, oh. like, I'm talking about my own experience because I'm from a small town and all the trans people I know are white. And they've all been discriminated against. And I just feel, like, really bad. Because, like, you discriminate against someone just because it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's... Yeah, and transphobia is a problem, obviously. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I don't get the white people getting a bad rap thing. It's a problem independent of the race of the trans people. Transphobia yeah, no, doesn't I'm... care about your race. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I don't want to sound bigoted, but, like, um, all the trans people I know, like, in my town, because I'm from a small town, uh, like all white. I've, I've, it's probably because all the any people in the town, town are white. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a race thing. I think that's <laughs> transphobia. No, I think it's just like transphobia. It's just, oh, I'm more of a man than you'll ever be, and shit like that. That's just like, fuck you, Ben. Like, mega cringe. All mm. men are kings. Hey, wait, 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 did somebody say to you that they're more of a man than you'll ever be? No, we said that to uh, someone who was trans. I'm not really upset. Oh, oh, a trans oh. man. <laughs> yeah, but it's like she doesn't want to be a fucking man because she's not a man. She's a fucking woman. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's bad. Imagine yeah. him walking up to a cis girl and saying that. Like, just think of the absurdity of these statements, dude. These people are fucking crazy. 
Yeah. And they don't get it, because, like, the consensus of quote-unquote common sense is on their side <laughs> so far. Yeah, that's bad. I don't like that. That's the needle we gotta move. Alright. I've got, got another question. Like, what, What's your opinion about, like, you know, transsexual porn? Because I, I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't mean to go a bit late. Do you feel like they're being objectified or, you know? Okay, I don't like the porn industry. I don't like, okay, this, this is getting personal now. I love uh, trans porn, but I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like, it's, it's a huge turnoff when, when I go onto these sites or whatever. And it's like tranny, like yeah. taught the real feminine way by huge dick or whatever like i don't like that shit like i I hate those teams yeah there's this like hyper fetishization of like quote traps or whatever like that's super unhealthy to me there are a lot of problems for an industry i think like there's nothing wrong with like calling a cross dresser a trap but like you should never call like a trans woman i don't know i'm sorry i've called myself a trap before no i mean like it's okay well, to I call think... cross, cross a trap, but like calling it a trans woman a trap, that's like completely offensive. Well, yeah, because the problem is the idea that we're like trying to trick men and we're actually men. Like, nah, we're not. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's fine when like trans women do it in the same way. It's fine for like gay people to call themselves like faggots or whatever. But right. like, it's like, I don't know. I I just don't like seeing those kind of terms thrown around on those sites like that just that sucks and and you why know, is it that the trans woman is always the top too like there's not enough yeah. like trans bottoms in porn <laughs> maybe that's you know, bias on my part well what i think is good is like a lot of this independent stuff you know because i pretty much you know do what they're comfortable with yeah sure well I don't know, because, like, they are doing it for money. Like, they might not yeah, be comfortable with oh. it. Yeah, but still at there's... the same time, you pretty much do what you want. I mean, sure, them, some of them might do it for money. You know, you don't have to if you don't want to, if you're doing it. I don't know. That's I feel like that's kind of naive. that way. That's, like, capitalist like... realism, basically. Yeah, because I feel like, I mean, there are a lot of, like, super fucking like traumatized even like straight porn stars who have been like completely trafficked and like taken advantage of and even though there is like quote choice because like oh you can just not do it and but you also won't get the money so it's like this weird like complex for a lot of women like i feel like the porn industry is mega fucked up right now yeah i mean like we what do you think what do you think about like um it does happen straight men um like some director wants them to star in like gay porn. What's your opinion about that? Uh, cringe. It's bad. No, because yeah, I did watch a documentary good. about the porn industry and it was actually uh, something like that happened. So it was like this straight porn star and they wanted him to star in gay. Yeah, that's not. Good. That's also really fucked up. Yeah. Like get a hire a gay porn star, right? Well, the problem with that is gay people don't actually exist. So, okay, I forgot. Hard. <laughs> yeah, hard to. Uh, I don't know. It's difficult to find something that isn't real. Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> Did you actually find my profile on that? Um, I haven't found your profile yet. Well, when you fit, when you upload this video, is it okay if I, like, download upload it to my channel? I mean, as long as it's okay with you. Yeah. So, so you're going to, like, upload this to your channel? Yeah. Yeah, good. Cross-platform content. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I have no interest in having a YouTube channel. I'm just like a normie who like <laughs> comes on talks to Madeline sometimes. Yeah, because that's that's the thing. Like, I didn't really get into YouTube until I was like older. But then I look back on what happened to the good old days of YouTube when you would like upload a video and it get like two thousand views instead of just four. 
Right, yeah, there's this weird, like, hyper-virality of, like, literally everybody on the platform. It's crazy. But, like, is that fading, do you think? Because, like, it's kind of hard to get traction. Like, it's, it's, it's weird how it works. You have to, like, hit it at a right time. Like, the Rose of Dawn video of mine that kind of, like blew up compared to my other videos was like i feel like it was just the right timing right gotta get on those trends it was right after contrapoints cringe and all that response to it yeah well, the, thing, the thing is like i'm trying to follow like uh, popularity because you think about how popular video game walk and i did one of like uh silent Hill, and it's only got like part two has only got 14 views and everything else has got like one or two views. It's like, fuck. You know, and you think that would make your channel grow, but it doesn't. Right, yeah. The biggest timing. thing is, like, consistency, I think. Right. Like, no matter what you're making, you just, just keep making it. Keep rolling it out, like, as often as you possibly can. And it'll maximize your the net that you're able to cast with your size so far. Right. And then, in one year, you'll be PewDiePie. Pretty much. <laughs> Hopefully. That's, that's like, here's hoping. <laughs> it could like, happen. I want There's to do like, one zero chance. I just want to do, like, horror games because I like the dark side. The dark side. <laughs> But like that's my favorite video game genre, you know, survival. Like you have to have a lot of patience with it, but you know, it's it's a really good experience. I've never really been able to get down with like horror games. I'm a massive pussy when it comes to like anything. But well, which ones have you played? Which horror games? Oh, I don't play horror games because I like get, I'm a baby. Yeah, but you must have like played some of them for you. No, literally none. But then, how how are you scared of them if you never played them? Because when I see the word scary, I get scared. Ah. <laughs> I'm like uh, the most like, beta male. Like, I, I don't do anything scary. Yeah, but you're, yeah, but you're not a fucking male, though. You're a woman. I'm a woman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are all trans on this We're all day. women now. We're, we've finally converted you. Right. Well, Thank God. I'd say, right, this might be a good one. If you play Silent Hill 2, it's not it's not too scary. It's like just the right pace. Maybe yeah. play that one day. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just, I guess I'm not interested enough in it. Like, I just don't want to, I'm media that, like, make me scared. Like, I just don't want to. <laughs> what games do you like playing? I like, um, huh. I like um, survival games. Like don't starve. Right. Uh, I like I like Minecraft. That's pretty good. Sometimes I like Hearthstone. Um, RPG games are chill. I, I don't know. I I feel like I have pretty like nerdy in games in general. Well, it's basically well, maybe, like, hmm? well, maybe like like you should do a few walkthroughs on your channel as well. You know, might get more views. Put a little bit of a political satire in your walkthrough. No, well, I don't. Like, Personally, I don't have much interest in uh, making a YouTube channel. Right. Yeah, but yeah. I like a YouTube channel. What? I like a YouTube channel, but I think it's pretty good. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's just, I, I guess I don't have enough time. Like, I feel like I'm I'm about to start college and stuff. I don't know. Right. I'm I'm happy where I'm at, just um, being a Madeline. Mean orbiter. <laughs> nah. Okay, Maddie. When you get big, you're gonna um. What you're gonna do? You're gonna democratize your channel, and it's gonna be split evenly between you and me. All right. All right. Worker co-op. <laughs> Even though I do nothing. <laughs> no one can call me a hypocrite anymore. Everyone who ever comes onto your channel has to get paid. <laughs> you claim to be a socialist, and yet 
you don't pay everyone who watches your channel. <laughs> you don't distribute the fuck your up. channel equally to everyone. <laughs> Do you want mod privileges or something? Like, if you're gonna simp hey. this hard, like, <laughs> not I. I would never simp. I disavow. All right. But um, you know, if you want to make me mod, I personally I don't like the bourgeois. Um, but you know, if uh, if you want to elevate me to that status, by all means, comrade. Well, Stalin is the only other mod, so I think it's. Fair. <laughs> We need more diversity of thought in your... <laughs> right. In your, there we go. Right now, it's just tankyism. Which is specifically why the admin of the Contra um, server isn't a moderator. She DM'd me. She's like, yeah, I would probably just kick him out of here if I was a mod. Oh, fuck. She like, she, like, extradited all the tankies from the... ContraPoints community, apparently. Jesus. <laughs> well, um... I, I'm excited for my, my extra privileges. Awesome. Although, if, he says it, they don't work. He's like, I can't do anything. It's like, dude, it literally says you can. Like, He's a tank. He's, his mind is broken. <laughs> He's brainwashed by Stalin. True. Which is why he calls himself Stalin. He's taken his subjective identity as his own. He's taken my meme. Like, I just want to call him, like, oh, you love Stalin. But then it's like he's already, he's already like, lampshaded the joke. Like, so it's not as effective anymore. Right. He's just, he wears it on his sleeve. That's what you have to do as a tanky. You just got to be like, yeah. A hundred gorillion did die, like... <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do that. I'm an anarchist, though, because, like, all anarchists are good people. I love anarchist people. So, True. Are you too anarchist? Um, I guess I lean that way, yeah. I consider myself anarchist. Madeline's, like, anarcho-commie queen, so... Yeah. Base queen. <laughs> yeah, because... Well, peace not that. I believe about doing things through peace for me. I mean, like, you might not agree with that, but, like, that's, that's my opinion. Well, what is inherently violent about anarchism to you? Well, well, nothing, but, like, I just... Like, my main goal is to make, like, a, a special community for people like us. That's, that's what I want to do. People like... What do you mean by people like us? Well, like, trans people, in general. Do you want a trans ethno state? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Good. I thought that's what you were trying to get at, and I was yeah, like, hey. we can have like, we can have like black trans women as well. So, so it's not going to be an ethno. Oh. State. Well, okay. I don't mean like literally an ethno state. Do you want a trans like a trans gen... state? Tra yeah. Sure. Yeah. A degenerate <laughs> no state. No, but I think, like, in some ways, it would be good like that, because you think about all the hatred we get and all the bigotry, you know? Well, like, I just, just think we like... need to get rid of the hatred and bigotry, like, and just live in society mm. with everyone else, like, we should belong in. Like, would you say the same thing about, like, black people? <laughs> right? Like, yeah, we can't like... just... Sec I'm not a trans separationist, like... <laughs> Because, like, when you when you compare it to other marginalized identities, like, it gets really weird, right? Because, like, when you're like, oh, I just, you know, Mexican people are just really privileged in, or they're just really oppressed in our white society. So they all just need to go back to Mexico, and then there will be no more oppression. Like, that's really weird to me. Like It doesn't actually oh. solve the problem of oppression. Can, yeah, I ask, can I ask a question about Mexican? Sure, hit me up. All right, I'm... I'm not completely educated about this because I'm from Britain. Sure. But um, one of my relatives, he went to Mexico, and he said like, they completely hate Americans, but I thought it was quite ironic. Like, they don't hate the Spanish, you know, even though they were colonized. So, like, what's your opinion? I think making sweeping generalizations about what Mexicans think is pretty cringe. Yeah, but, like, some of them do, like, I'm not saying all of them, but, like, some of them do, like, have this grudge against America for some reason. But, like, 
at the same time, most of them don't have a grudge against the Spanish, even though they call like. I mean, if I were a Mexican, I would probably dislike America, too, just to be honest. Yeah, looking at yeah. the way that our government has been treating their people, it's, like, understandable. And, I mean, okay, the, the Spanish colonized America, sure, but then, like, the Europeans, like, came over and, like, slaughtered everybody, so I feel like we're definitely more to blame. Yeah, but... Yeah, but do you think that Spanish are Europeans as well? I mean, Spain is right. pretty much a part of you. Okay, well, sure, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I meant, like, the, um... Like, the people from, like... I don't fucking know. You you, you, you catch my drift. Yeah. Well, like, the conquistadors killed people. Like, what do you what do you mean? They should be mad at their colonizers as well. <laughs> I want like, everybody to be critical yeah. of everybody in history, because everyone in history was cringe at some level. Yeah, but I mean, like, they were colonized by them. Don't seem to help us cringe against them when they use the Spanish language. Yeah, at the same time, though, I don't necessarily think it's chill to, like, hold grudges against people for things that, like, their ancestors did. But the problem with that right now is that a lot of Americans are still, like, fucking racist. And we have Donald Trump in office, so, like, it's kind of understandable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's more of, like, you know, like, in your roots. Because, like, here in Britain, you know, the Welsh, the Scottish, and the Irish, we all hate the English. But it's like, well, why? It's just like, sure, some of them are wankers, but... You know, because, like, they were called not by them, I mean. Why do you guys have to make such a hot term for people you don't like? What, what me? Um, British people. I don't, like, yeah. if, if you're just asking me, wanker sounds hot. All right? <laughs> no, well, it's sort of like an insult. Well, it can be both ways. It can be an insult. Or be a... <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just messing around. But yeah, like, if I were Mexican, like, looking at what we're doing at the fucking border right now, pretty right. fucking degenerate activity going on down. <laughs> Ice is degenerate. Yeah, we're just, like, fucking putting people into concentration camps right now. It's pretty cringe. Yeah, literally. Fucking peak cringe. All racism is cringe. I know I know that's a hot take around here, alright? <laughs> I don't mean to speak my mind to the point of um absurdity or anything, but just free marketplace of ideas, alright? Oh, alright, I got I got a question. What's up? Uh, well again it's it's another race question, but do you believe in, like, a reverse ethnic state? You know, really, like, everyone is... Huh? There's no such thing as a reverse ethno state. If yeah, you would I'm, just... I'm... No, but what I meant is, like, you believe in, like, uh, everyone race mixing. Is that, is that what you believe? Oh, oh, I mean, sure, why not? I mean, there's no difference between anybody, between any different race. I think as... Okay, personally, like, as an anarchist... Right, like I think people should have like freedom of travel. Like you should be able to go wherever you want on the earth. Sure. Based. Yeah, like I, I guess I don't have a problem with everybody like mixing all up or whatever, <laughs> you know. But like, what about those people who, like want to? Like, I don't want to sound big to them, but like, you know, some people want to date. In their own race, you know, like some whites do, some Asians do, you know, some blacks do. What's your opinion about that? Um, I think as we get more diverse and culture shifts towards a more multicultural approach, I think that stuff will kind of go away. Um, but yeah, like I mean, even I mean, in a, sorry. Yeah, but I mean, like I think it will always happen, not because of prejudice, you know, just like natural, uh, natural attraction makes sense. Well, sure, but I don't. I I. I... Again, I don't know how much of that is natural, right? Like, I think a lot of it is raised. Um, and even then, like, if we're in a culturally diverse... 
um society you want to like bang a white chick like you know whatever you know do what you want that that's kind of like the whole point right like you can get with whoever you want yeah i'm not wrong with that. i'm just saying like you know you know like for example some asians you know want to date of an asian they don't find they don't want to date other races you know makes sense. right yeah and that's fine in a multicultural society you know but like they're still the same race like not trying to sound big you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm I'm saying that like we can have people that want to date people of their same race in a multicultural society. Like I don't Yeah. The goal isn't like everyone should be like race mixing for the sake of race mixing itself. Right. Like fuck who you want. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not trying to say like Every Asian person on Earth has to fuck Mexicans. Like that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say like get with who you want, you know. Personally, I don't care who people fuck. All right. I know a lot of conservatives do. They they tend to. Um, yeah, but you know I'm not like that. If you want those beautiful Aryan white babies in, in my multicultural society, do do it. That's your truth. <laughs> Hit it up. Well, what about Anglo Saxon? What about Anglo Saxons? Yeah. Fucking based. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, do you ever feel like Anglo Saxons are an impressed man? Like oh. I don't know if there are any Anglo-Saxons left. <laughs> I don't know if they are an oppressed minority anywhere, to be honest. Isn't that just like your yeah, average like, white dude? Yeah, because most well, of no. America was colonized by them. Well, yeah, they were colonized by it, but I don't know if everybody... I don't know if there's anybody left that's like pure blood Anglo-Saxon. Well, H.P. Well, Lovecraft. Not. Well, he's dead. I know, but like... I didn't agree with everything he said, but I, I like his stories. That's the thing. Yeah. No, like someone can be all, like based on his own racist paranoia. Yeah, but all, all I'm saying is like you can still like the story for what it is. Right. No, sure. Because like you think about it, like it is a timeless classic. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I I think it's chill to like like art that's not necessarily like PC or whatever, like. Like Black Betty slaps, but like <laughs> still fucking racist. I like David Bowie a lot, and people say he like raped a child or whatever. Yeah, and same thing with Michael Jackson, right? Yeah. Like, do you want to talk about H.P. Lovecraft? H.P. Lovecraft? Um, I don't know much about him. Well, well, this is thing I thought it was quite interesting. You see, both his parents were from England, and we were both mm-hmm. like pure Anglo-Saxon. And he was born and raised in Rhode Island, but he, he never identified as sort of like American, even though he he had the accent. He always thought of himself as Anglo-Saxon, and I thought it was quite interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Didn't he name his like cat the N word? Yeah. Yeah, he did. That's bad. He was racist as shit. And he was I mean, afraid of water too. He was afraid of water and black people. <laughs> well, we all know that black people can't swim, so. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm, go together. I'm not. I'm not trying to shit, sound like shit here, but like, um, do you, do you ever see things like from his point of view? Like, you know, this was a different time, and he grew up in a town full of you know, Anglo-Saxons, and they moved to New York, and there were all these immigrants here, and it was all completely alien to, like, do you, do you ever see that? Or, or I mean, sure, like, I don't necessarily see him, see things from that perspective, like, I just, I tend to, I, I don't know, I guess I sympathize with it, but I, it's still, like, a wrong belief. Well, they're also yeah, but, immigrants like, there, technically. Yeah, but, like, yeah, but what, what I'm saying is, like, that's, that's all he's never he meets foreigners and they're like aliens to him you know i mean i might be wrong to say but you know that's how he saw them 
Well, yeah, no, that's not wrong to say. I mean, I totally understand that. Like I said, I don't necessarily uh, blame people for being like having like culturally passed down beliefs or whatever in the same way. I don't blame like Catholics for being Catholic. Like I, I don't blame it, but it's still wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but do you ever feel like um, look at an author from like the nineteen twenties and you think you can't really fault them for that time period because that's all? Yeah, exactly. People have always been woke, though. Like, there's always been like a certain subsection of the population with more progressive views than the status quo. Yeah. I'm tr- trying to look into the ideology a bit later. What's the opinion about Frederick Nietzsche? You ever heard of him? About who? Frederick Nietzsche. He was a German philosopher. I can't say I'm familiar. Well, basically, like, um, he had this, like, um, what's it called? Um, uh, I agree. I'm saying, is it? And they said, like, oh, Frederick Nietzsche is about, you know, the master race and all that shit, but it was never, it was about, you know, you feel like shit, I mean, you just rise up to, like, feeling better. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. The Ubermensch rise up thing was totally stolen by yeah, the Nazis, it. though. Yeah, that's what I mean. He <laughs> was talking about, yeah, nihilism, that's what it was. Like, yeah. believing everything like was completely pointless. And I feel like that sometimes. Well, he's just saying, even though everything is completely pointless, you can, you know, you can still find purpose in it. You can still rise up and become, you know, like a superhuman. And yeah, then, that's like, the right. Took that and they thought they are your superior. That's the thing is that like, I'm a nihilist in the sense that I don't believe in any objective, anything. Um, but the answer to nihil, like the nothing matters about, like there's no objective meaning to my life thing is existentialism it's like okay so now do something about that like create your own meaning for living because that's the whole right. point of it that's the only point yeah. you could possibly have do, do yeah. you ever feel like that like life is pointless because yeah i mean i from an objective like stamp like it, it literally is like there's no meaning like, in, in uh, yeah because like are you a fan of, like, the, the Matrix films? Because I think that's a great example of nihilism, you know, especially in the later. Um, I'm not a... I, I, I don't know if I've seen them. I don't think I've seen them. I, I, I watched Matrix it last night. Matrix is, and, like, a critique of capitalism yeah. as well. Well, yeah, but, but there's also this line in the last Matrix Revolution sort of seems like pure nihilism. It's like, um, it's encoding us to, like, fight for a survival. And you know, basically, Neo is facing his death. And then Agent Smith says to him, well, why get up? Why start fighting? Do you believe you're fighting for something more than your survival? It's sort of like that mentality that we all have. It's just like, well, why even bother? You know, it's just like encoding this just to fight for a survival, you know, just to keep going going. But when you really think about it, everything is pointless. Right. Well, that's what Maddie was saying, right? Like, you have to make your own meaning for it. Yeah, I don't like to just live in the black pill. That's why I'm not a yeah. pessimist. Because, like, there's no worth in saying, like, oh, it's all pointless, like, I'm just gonna, like, fucking kill myself or whatever. Like, you should make the most of it, right? You yeah. only got... You, you one, should pursue baby. what you find meaningful, like, genuine, like, from your inner core, you know? That's how I see it. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's like nothing matters except what you think matters. Right. Right. I'm going to (laughs) cry. But like H.P. Lovecraft was a pessimist. Like some people get pessimist philosophy out of his writing. What what is a pessimist? I'm not familiar. It's basically like the nothing matters and then you just stop there like you just kind of right. live in the void like just black pill philosophy it's about the same as nihilism 
yeah, it's like nihilism to the extreme extent almost. Right. Like pure nihilism, right? Yeah, kind of. It also has to do with like the cosmic insignificance of man. Like you think about like nothing we're doing on this planet means anything to the sun, which could just swallow the whole thing, you know, that type right. of idea. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because sometimes I feel like that. It's like, um, well, what's what's the point now? And sometimes I feel like, well, if I don't have any children, that's my genes on. But in the end, I think, well, does it really fucking matter? You think how pathetic you well, whether or not you have children, you're not going to care about your, like, longevity after you're, like, dead, right? right? So, like, so I feel like my, you know, my my truth or whatever is just doing what's best, like, for for the things that I care about, I guess, and for the betterment of, like, human society, I guess, to make the best lives for the people that um, I'm leaving behind, I guess. Because I, I guess I do care about that on a core level. Like, even if it's not necessarily... What? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just saying, like, d- despite your disagreements, like, would you read these books? You know, like, H.P. Lovecraft, French Knitschi, and stuff like if, if I wanted to read... Um, if I wanted to read them, yeah, I wouldn't care if they were, like, racist. Yeah. <laughs> Marx there's, wasn't... There's, anti- also, there's also this great uh, Japanese manga artist called Shinji Ichu. He's, he's like the uh, Japanese version of H.P. Lovecraft. He does like a lot of cosmic horror. He's really inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. If you, if you ever hear about him. Um, I can't say I have. I haven't either. Wasn't Marx yeah, was... like racist ironically though? <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't know because I, I never read Marx. I don't really know. I think that might actually be true. Like him and Engels would do the whole like say the n-word to make fun of racists thing i've i've, I've well, heard that well i know well, he's an anti-semite but that's that's about the extent to what i know yeah, about his yeah, but he's himself. Well, yeah, how can it be no marx was not jewish i don't I think he was. wasn't he what wait am i wasn't he am a I german a... jew am i crazy was marx Jewish. He was ethnically he has a, Jewish. But he has a he has a book about the Jewish question. Yeah, yeah, but it's not on it's it's on the Jewish question. It's not like here's me being a Nazbol. That's not what it <laughs> Oh. Okay. Well well there's something I want to say about like Marxism and communism in general. It's just like um like, you hear about, like, all these awful things, like, uh, you know, Joseph Stalin and Vladimir Lenin did, you know, all, all those people be killed. And you, you, you think, like, they don't really allow individual individuality, so they were like, oh, well, if you're a guy, you have short hair, if you're a woman, you have long hair and all that. They would never accept, like, a trans person or a gay person. And that's, that's one of the things that put me off, and it's, like, really hard for me, you know, to get on board with, you know, like, more than Marx. That makes sense. Well, that's not Marxism, though. That's authoritarianism. Yeah. Right. But, that's just yeah, but people all I'm saying is like, themselves it, Marxists being authoritarian. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, like, it did happen because, like, I would hate it, you know, if I was like, oh, well, I'm a Marxist, and then someone said to me, okay, but you're a male, so you have to have short hair, you have to live as a man, and shit like that. Well, just, that person is just a traditionalist. Yeah. Probably a tanky as but, well. Might as well just not listen but, to them. <laughs> So, yeah, look. Are you saying like, are you saying like Karl Marx uh, believed that gender was a social construct? Well, I bet Marx wasn't like the most like stick up his ass type of person about gender roles. You know, I bet he didn't really give a shit. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know the claim about that because, like, I mean, he was around in like the eighteen hundreds, right? So, like. Yeah, but, like, he kind of had a Hard crazy to... haircut and everything. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <clears throat> he seems like an individual type of person. Yeah. But, uh, like, does he actually say things that were around to summit? Because... Um, I, don't, I don't think he actually did, but maybe like a little bit. It might come off that way now. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, I, I don't know. I I guess I just heard that. Yeah, but this might make him like a hypocrite because like he was, you know, 
that have Jewish blood. And, you know, he said Francis. Well, I mean, it makes him like, I don't know if that's hypocrisy. I feel like that's identity politics to say that it's hypocrisy. Right. It's more just like selling like, out the community. I found an like, article. Like, do you get Jews that, like, actually hate themselves for being Jews? I bet there's internalized anti-Semitism. I found an article called Karl Marx's Radical Anti-Semitism. Okay. Was it written by some liberal or, like... I, it's by Michael Ezra. He, argue, he argues that Karl Marx's anti-Semitism is clear and unambiguous. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So, um, in Marx's essay on the Jewish question, originally published in 1844, contains the following. What is the worldly religion of, of the Jew? Huckstering. What is his worldly god? Money. Money is the religious god of Israel, in face of which no other god may exist. Money degrades all the god of man and turns them into commodities. The bill of exchange is the real god of the Jew. His god is only an illusionary bill of all nationality of the Jew is the nationality of the merchant, of the man of money in general. That sounds pretty anti-Semitic. Okay, well, what did he yeah. say, man? So his his whole viewpoint was basically the stereotype of the rich Jewish, Jewish guy. Yeah. yeah. But he was a Jew himself, so that's just like, what? Well, his his granddad was a rabbi. Like, that's his Jewish blood. He wasn't, like, religiously yeah. Jewish. He wasn't, like, a practicing, like, fucking Jew. I, I think Marx was an atheist, right? Yeah, totally. Right. But i got a question somewhat. Um... But, but what do you too like, even though you don't believe in it? Like, what do you read, like, fascist literature? Uh, I'm just asking. What's I, the question? Would we read, you read fascist, like, fascist literature? literature? No, like, I'm not saying that like, you agree with it. Would you read it? That's I mean, <clears throat> I guess if I was interested in it, like, sure. I don't try to shelter myself from ideas that I disagree with. Yeah, I literally started reading Thomas Sowell when Illuminati recommended it in the chat. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like a hypocrite here because I'm not like that anymore. But, you know, I did actually used to read stuff like And what's quite interesting is, you know, like Benito Mussolini, before he found the ideology, he was actually a socialist himself. Yeah. And you look into it and it's yeah. very similar to uh, socialism. Well, he probably tried to make it sound similar to socialism. Like, I talk about this all the time, how fascists co-opt um, revolutionary or populist Co rhetoric just yeah. to, like, fucking take power and do, kinda, like, the exact opposite. Kind of like a, like, crypto thing, right? Right. Like, Hitler did this. That's why it was the National Socialist Party. Yeah. yeah. It's... Uh, no, it's just sort of like, uh, like, it's like, some people say, like, uh, Mussolini wasn't an anti Semite. Some people say he was. And, like, you know, was he or wasn't he? It's just, it's just hard to believe, you know? It's just hard to know. Well, I don't know. I, I would no. put the money on he was one. Yeah, but I mean, well, does he hate, like, Jews just for being Jews, or was it, like, more to do with him being. You know, connected to the national socialist. I mean, I don't know. I think hating Jews is pretty cringe, no matter what the reason. Yeah, I, I know that. I'm just saying, like, from a history standpoint, you know, like, before he even joined up with Fiat Reich, it's like, was he an anti Semite before that? You know, before he joined up with the Fiat Reich, is that when he anti Semite? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, I I'm not too read up on Mussolini to be honest. Yeah, but the thing is, like, um, like, I'm not trying to like, like we we talk shit about like you know fascists and all that, but like I think we really need to look into their ideology to understand them, and you know, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, sure, there's something to be said for understanding the other side, but I don't know if I need to like go out of my way and like read every like fascist whatever to yeah, like like with... yeah yeah. 
I didn't say that. I'm just like you, you have should to, have some. You have to understand as far as your critique reaches, you have to have some kind of understanding. But farther than that, it's like, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, sorry. Cause... Like you have to understand what you're critiquing, but any more understanding than that is just like extra, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. Oh, I got some of the. Well, have you have you two ever heard of uh, Oswald Mosley? He was the uh, leader of a British Union of Fascists. Uh, no, I haven't. Few... I haven't either. Well, the thing is, like, this is what really draws me into it. Like, like, I'm not a fascist anymore. You know, I'm a far left. Like, this is what drew me into it because he was what they would call a peace love fascist. He didn't want a second world. You know, he believed in equal rights for women. He was an anti. He said he was an anti semite and all that stuff. And that's one of the things that attracted. Me. And, you know, him being British and myself being British, you know. Well, what did he want? Well, basically, he wanted, like, a uh, sort of, like, uh, like a fascist state. But, like, he said he believed in equal rights for women. And some of that backs it up because, you know, like, um, 40% of his followers were women. And he said he was an anti semite I don't know how much of this is true, but, you know, you look into it. And that's one of the things that attracted him. I mean, this was in the feet. Well, sure, but authoritarianism is still bad, even if it's like woke fascism. <laughs> like, hmm. in my opinion, what labels do you ascribe to yourself? Well, what me? Yeah. Well, uh, like you say, you're a far leftist, but like what specifically? You don't yeah. have roles. I don't because I sort of like you could call myself an anarchist, but I don't do that. Anymore. Because I want to do things like peaceful, so I call myself like a radical trans feminist because I just want like a, a trans feminist society, like, um, you know, away from the patriarchy and all this transphobia where we trans girls can just live in peace. You know? So, like every time we bring up anarchism, you say like I just want to do things peacefully. Like I don't know what is intrinsic to anarchism that requires I, violence. I, 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 don't, I don't mean all anarchy. I'm just saying, like, I spoke to a few that are like that, and I do want to be associated with the ones that are violent. I mean, I want to be associated with the ones that do things peacefully. Well, I mean, so, I endorse they... political violence. Like, I supported the riots. Sure. I mean, <laughs> so, like, what is... I, I don't know. Like, what did they say to you? Oh, I got, I got another thing I want to bring up, right? This is quite interesting. Oh, okay. The first, the first fascist party in Britain was called the British Fascista. And the leader of that was actually a uh, suffragette, and she was female. She was actually a feminist, and she founded the first fascist party in Britain. But she was confused about it, and basically it was just, like, extreme conservative. I thought it was really interesting. I mean... Woke fascism is still fascism. Yeah, what about yeah, know, extreme like, conservatism? Yeah, what I mean, is like she she appealing. didn't know she she was she didn't know what like actual fascism was. Like she thought it was like radical conservatism, but it's but it's not. And you, and she thought what do you mean like, by it's she not, thought it was like though. radical. Yeah, but she thought it was like radical conservatism with like uh, feminism sprinkled in when it's like the complete opposite. Like she was completely confused about it, and she called herself a fascist. And I don't really know. I'm confused a little I mean, bit. Yeah, me too. I mean, you, you, get, you, 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 don't, you don't feel uncomfortable when you're talking about this stuff, do you? Oh, no, not at all. I'm just, uh, I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, do you think it's good, like, like, I'm not a fascist anymore, like, I'm a far leftist, but do you think it's good, like, do you think it's good, like, I got this education about fascism, so, you know, I can, you know, bring it back to you and, you know, tell you like, what they believe, you know, their ideology and stuff like that, so we can understand them, you know, what I mean, I mean, sure. There's no harm in knowledge, right? Yeah, because I did have a lot of books by them that I used to read. So. Well, right. What, yeah. Like, what specifically, like, that they do believe? Do you think that we should like talk about though? Well, I think like there is one thing about fascism that we should all have, and that is unity. But that was one thing that we believed in the most, and that, like, like I said, Benito Mussolini copied about from socialism but like unity it's like one thing we should all have so that's not a fascist thing unity is like yeah, a, 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 a like a leftist yeah, but you see, 
he, t he took it from socialism and he sort of made it like the core of fascism, like unity. We're all, well, no, okay. So, so yeah. fascist unity isn't unity. Fascist unity is getting certain groups to shut up, right? And, yeah, and like, it's exclusion. Yeah, but, like, yeah, and, and I know that, but I'm just saying that's that's the one thing that we should have, you know, unity. That's, that's what I mean, like unity. Sure, but I don't, I don't see what use there is in ascribing it to fascism. No, I mean, that's like, what you like, tried to take from. So, that's what you tried to take from socialism, and you tried to put into fascism was unity. But you know, as you can tell, it didn't work out. Well, I think there's better words than unity, like solidarity and coalition building. Like that's what we need. True. Yeah. Like I don't know if it's useful to like take things from other ideologies. I th think it's just good to like do what's right, right? You don't have to like cite fascism every time you like think about I don't know something, some good idea. Yeah. But like, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but like, I don't really like communism because whenever I think about communism, I think about all the horrible things Joseph Stalin did and people like that and all the millions of people that were killed. Like, it, that's what they want you to you... think, though. That's not really but, what it is. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that... I know, but I, I just think, you know, if we were a communist, I don't ever want it to be like, you know, Joseph Stalin or Chairman Mao with all the horrible things they did for people. That's for, like, if that yeah, makes sense. Well, well so, so that's not communism, though. That's a that's authoritarianism doing that. Yeah, communism. But, I mean, they called, you know, yeah, but they called themselves communist, though, didn't they? They they did, and they were they might have been communist, but they were also authoritarian, and that's what killed those people. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what we, I mean. I never, we need, like, happen, like, critical because, analysis like, of it. Because I don't want to sound like a hypocrite yet, but, like, in a way, like, Stalin, he was even worse than Hitler. He killed more people, and he was a lot more cruel. And, like, I don't ever, ever want anyone like that in a society again. Right, yeah, I mean, and... So of no course dictator. <laughs> yeah, just don't have a dictator. Yeah. But how, how can we achieve that? Then? I'm sorry? How can we have it, though? Like, if it, if we were um, in the I mean, I'm not super sure on the theoretical of that, that but nothing in, nothing I've read about communism necessitates a dictator. Yeah. Except well, when tankies I, I, read the dictatorship of the proletariat line, they think it then, literally means dictator. Like, what, oh, yeah. yeah, but then, like, why do people like Joseph Stalin and Chuma Mam get into power? Because they want power. And, the, yeah, can, okay, and it was so authoritarian socialism that they were doing. Yeah, but why can't people yeah. see like the corruption? So my understanding was that the um, the democratic framework in Russia at the time was so weak that it was like super easy to get taken advantage of yeah. um, by by people like that. And so Stalin played the game and rose to power, and then just like fucking like fuck shit up. But if we have a strong like democratic framework. Um, democratic government in our communism. In theory, that shit shouldn't happen. I love democracy. I love democracy. Do, do socialists be, believe in democracy? Because I'm not... Unquestionably. Um, I, personally, I believe in uh, democracy, and I consider myself a socialist. I think, I think socialism is inherently um, more democratic than you know whatever we got going on right now. Yeah, but do, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. Do you ever think there's like uh, problems with democracy, you know, like that? And like um, division, division is like a big thing of it. No, I think that the will of the people should be um, reflected in what kind of society we have inherently. Yeah. Yeah, but do you ever think about, like, there is division in democracy, and it does actually, like, tear society? Like, do you, do you think about that? So, okay, sometimes when I argue with Bernie or Busters, um, <laughs> I do um, lose faith in democracy to an extent, but I think as a, pr on principle, I think um, having, like, one small group of people impose their will on the majority is um, immoral. Um, 
I don't think that, like, you know how people say, oh, Democrats and Republicans are so divided. Like, I don't really think they are. I think that's, like, a manufactured, like, thing in people's heads. Like, that's not actually how it works. Like, I agree. The problem with our democracy isn't, like, division of any kind. It's both sides, quote unquote, collaborating for a right wing agenda. That's the problem. The problem yeah, is I capitalism. Agree. When capitalism infects democracy, it's no longer democratic. True. Yeah, but like, like, like when I used to like look into fascist ideology, this is this is one thing I agreed with at the time. It's like democracy does cause division when you think about it. You know, you have conservatives and liberals. You know, and just at each other's throats all the time. Well, if, if you really think about it, you know, in a way, it is true. But conservatives and liberals both agree on the capitalist system, though. Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, like, there will always be political ideologies that are at each other's throats, if you get what I mean. You know, democracy is a way of keeping that, you know, that they are always at each other's throats. So, if, if you, so you think it would be so better in, like, a unitary term. government? But, uh, you know... I, I didn't say that. I'm just saying, like, in a way that does happen. They always be well, ideologies against each other at, at each other's throats, and you know. But the alternative, the alternative to having ideologies against each other, is having one ideology and then the rest that fight against that. Isn't that worse? <clears throat> yeah, it is. But like, then like, it's a really hard question because like, how can you unify everyone? You know, when you like, you want everyone to be an individual. Individual. And you want to unify everyone, but then at the same time, everyone's at each other's throats for the different. Like, if you, if you see what I mean. Well, sure, but I, I don't know if we necessarily need unity, like, as a core thing. I, I feel like dem- democracy is the best we're going to have, right? Yeah. I mean, I do believe in democracy to, an, to like, an extent. Like, but I, I do see the flaws in it. If, it. if that's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't, I don't care. Everything can I mean, be viewed as a trade-off. Yeah. It's just like picking the right one. <laughs> right. Hey, um, you, you too, you don't hate me, do you? Of course no. not. Why would we hate you? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, when I said, like, uh, I used to read, like, fascist ideology and shit like that. I mean, I used to be a Trump supporter. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. this is a bit different, you know, this is, this is like actual fascism. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> mind. Not, yes, like, I don't care if you're an ex-fascist. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not anymore. Right. You know, I'm pretty we, much, yeah, we all I'm, have our own journey through life, comrade. Yeah, because I'm pretty much like a radical feminist now, so yeah. how, how could I possibly be a fascist? Right, yeah, I mean, of course not. No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, little things, like you were saying about woke fascists, like, little things like sort of draws me in. Because, like I was saying, the first fascist party was led by a suffragette, you know, feminist. And she was mis... She didn't, well, she didn't know what fascism was, but she was, like, extreme conservative. It was, like, little things like that. It was like, oh, fascism is really, you know, like, radical feminism and shit like that, but it's really not. Wrong. No, that's what I mean. Like she was misguided about it. She didn't know what it yeah. really meant. Politics is or, confusing. Or she was crypto, and uh, she knew what she was doing, but she was masking it behind a guise of feminism to pull people like you over. Right. Yeah, because, well, like I said, like she didn't understand like Mussolini's ideology. You know, and she just thought. Well, fascism, extreme conservatism, feminism, that's, that's all. When really it's like complete opposite. Yeah. Well, again, you never really know. It could be like she knew what she was doing, but she was just trying to get more people into it. Yeah. Which is usually the case with fascists, I think. Yeah, you can never say that you want to suppress 
minorities. You kind of have to hide it. I think fascism preys on um, weak or insecure people that want to be led. What, like, like autistic people like me? I'm sorry? What, like autistic people like me? Or... I mean, not necessarily autistic Whoa, people. no, I don't think that's what he was suggesting at all. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean that, but I mean, like, I, I look back now, maybe that was one of the things that led me into I think um, fascism preys on a sense of a desire for for comfort or stability <laughs> in a leader um, that you don't really get with a lot of other more radical uh, left ideologies, I feel like. Well, especially the ones that are like, no leaders. That just makes like the people who need a leader scared. <laughs> Nervous, yeah. But there can be like, um, not necessarily like just hierarchy, but like there can be leadership in, um, in more free... <laughs> Demo- democratic societies well, but in a way i do see i do sort of see like the comfort of like just having one leader you know if you see what i mean yeah that's, that's, that's kind of what i'm saying um because it, it pulls in those people that um that feel like they need someone or feel like um making individual decisions maybe gives them anxiety like um there is a comfort in just wanting to be led um and uh, that can be hard to get out of for a lot of people. Yeah. It, it it is like super safe to just like want like a um hyper chad fascist daddy to like lead you to the sunset or whatever, mm-hmm. but like that can be dangerous, right? So 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 you two like you don't mind talking about this, right? No. Yeah, I don't care. I, I you're not, you're not going to be like, oh, well, he used to be a fascist. I'm going to block him. I don't want anything to do about him. No. Right? We're not of course not. That's, that is cringe. <laughs> if Madeline did that, uh, I would disavow. <laughs> I would... <laughs> but what else did you want to say about it? Uh, about what? About fascism, I guess. Well, I mean, like, there's so much I can teach you about it because, like, I read all these books in it. If you have any questions about it, because, like, like, do you have any questions? Not many, no. Yeah, I don't really have well, any I mean... questions. What, like, well, actually, I do. Do you still, right. like, other than the unity point, like, do you still, like, see any appeal or, like, believe somewhat in any of the like ideas that you were exposed to in those books well i I suppose like it's not really like a fascism thing because this can be any ideology but like strong leadership you know we just want like this one person to be like pure and uncorrupt and just like you know virtuous makes sense sure yeah but the problem with fascism though is that 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 leader is never perfect like that's just uh propaganda yeah, but I, I I didn't say fascism. I said like you know like any ideology. Oh like, oh, I don't know if that yeah, exists. Yeah, well, so if it's any, then um, oh, <laughs> I guess my my um contention would be why do we have to attach these things to fascism? Well, I don't. But the thing is, like, I read these, I read all these books, and you know, I just got like all this. Like, I don't believe in it. I just got all this stuff like. Well, maybe you should read some more leftist books. Well, I don't really read books that much. I mean, I got like H.P. Lovecraft and Dante's Inferno. I had to get around Paul. I mean, of course, if you, um, I mean, I definitely don't blame you for any of this. I mean, if you read a bunch of fascist literature, then sure, you know, a lot of those ideas are going to sound a lot more appealing to you. When, um, in reality, authoritarianism is like mega cringe yeah i mean like really draw you in yeah i don't know if joseph, don't know if joseph Stalin wrote any books but like i suppose if you read them they would draw you in and you think about all the people he killed but it still draws you in you know? right yeah fascism is super insidious and it like i said it definitely preys on the weak and um people who are maybe insecure or anxious yeah yeah because like i was saying about like this uh 
YouTuber online that I used to follow, he's like a neo-fascist, and he said, well, two of my followers are trans. He's like, one of the things that sort of, like, got me into it. Well, you know, it's sort of, well, we can be included. Well, in the that'll never matter, though, like, who follows you, because there's always going to be, like, those one of the good ones types. Like, it doesn't matter when there are people like Blair White and Rose of Dawn in, in the world. Like, yeah, but the thing, the thing is, like, I, I, find, I find this problem is, like, People can't like um, understand that there is like actual fascism, like Benito Mussolini, and then there's like extreme conservatism, like Blair White. They are like two different things. Well, no, I'm not necessarily saying that Blair White's a fascist. I'm just saying that like um, the identity of the people following an idea don't really matter. Yeah. If, um. The uh, the ideology, like, like, still doesn't condone those people. You know. I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of black people who were sympathetic to the slaves and like had an I, um, or the slave owners and had like an internalized complex about feeling worse than um than white people. That doesn't make slavery um a good idea just because a few black people internalized that um ideology and went with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, like if you want to like ask me a question about fact, I got this knowledge and I can like you know tell you about it. Maybe if I think of one in the future, I'll I'll um I'll hit you up. Yeah, but you you do know I'm not like that anymore. Oh yeah, sure, of course. I mean, I, f I threw away my copy of mine and uh, the doctrine of my threw away in a bin or trash can, as you know. So yeah, yeah, you don't. Need need to prove to me that you're not a fascist. <laughs> I, uh, I got you. What Thanks. drew you into leftism? What? What, like, got you into leftism instead? Like, the sympathy towards, like, trans people and women. So and sort of like the, really... same, the same appeal. Yeah, it was sort of like, you know, it felt bad people like being shit shitted upon you know by like these right wingers and just traditionalists you right. know it's more yeah yeah so it was my thing but that got me into like left i mean it's like like i said i got this little conflict you know because like i want to call myself a feminist but then at the same time you hear about these two fuck you're supposed to be on the same fuck Right, yeah. Well, you're on the right side now, I think. Yeah. The so, left is the so true he... anti-tradition side. Well, okay, so um, what other core, what, what other values do you hold that are core to leftism? Other than, like, uh, um, being supportive of trans people. Well, I, I, suppose, I suppose, like, this, like, you know, freedom, um, sort of, like, um, like, you don't have to follow, like, gender norms, you know, whether you're, like, cis or trans, shit like that. You can have long well, hair, you can have short hair and stuff like that, you know, just break through traditionalism. Sure, but there are there any other um, values that you hold that are separate from gender that are, like, well, super I'm not, I'm not sure, it's just, like, I suppose it's sort of, like, people are more friendly, more accepting. I can't, can't really think of it. That's sort of like my main thing. Well, um... Maybe, uh... You might be... It, it might be interesting if you would, uh... Like, learn a little bit more about maybe, like, socialism and stuff like that. Because right now it sounds like, um... You have this, like, super strong, like, grounding in what you believe in in regards to trans people. And you found that leftism is the most sympathetic to that, but you don't really have, like, an ideological like a, a yeah. state that other than that you know what i mean so it might be good to uh, expand your mind to those other ideas yeah, but do you ever feel like this uh, in a comp um, because like i was saying when i think of like socialism economies i'm thinking of, like the old type you know like oh you're a guy you have to have short hair there's no such thing as transgenderism and shit like that. it's 
it's just but, but that's what I think of when I hear his wit, you know, it's all like eat me a pussy. But that's not what, what socialism or communism is about at all. Right. But I'm just saying people who use that ideal for the wrong reason. It's just like embeds into you. It's like, oh, well, they would never accept you. You know, sure, you can but what, about, shit. what about like Bernie Sanders types? Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't really know much about um, I'm, I don't oh. Mean some, like, oh, some, like, really cool. right. I've, I've, sorry. America centric. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, I do, I do follow American politics, just not that much. But, like, I came all about American politics and my own politics because over here, if they're just a bunch of. <laughs> right but there's nothing intrinsic to like like um socialism or communism that's like traditionalist like that's not what that's not what it's about at all it might come from reading a lot of fashy books it's not just that it's just like um might be because like I'm, you know, i get these whole ideas or we'll think or well, think about like all these, uh, you know, socialists, you know, they, they always make all these men have short hair and all would have long hair and they would never accept transgender people. Blah, 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 blah. Well, sure, but again, that's not socialism or communism, that's authoritarianism. Yeah. I bet, we'd, I bet you would so, like Marx. Uh, but what, what was I like? Marx. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I saw one of his books. In, I saw one of his books in a shop, but it's like fucking six hundred pages long. Like, like I say, don't <laughs> that. is it capital? Look. Um, can't remember. I think he has a German. It might be Das Kapital. Well, I, yeah, I, I I'm with you, man. I haven't started yet. This that shit's daunting as fuck. But I want to start reading theory. Oh, I, I, fuck I, yeah. I got, I got a Um, you, you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Right. I do have one fascist book left in my shelf. But it's not because I believe in them. It's because, like, well, basically, there was this man in Romania, the world. And I keep up book for you as a sign of respect because the struggle he went. And basically, at the end, he was shot. He had acid thrown in his face. He was thrown in a unmarked grave. And he wasn't even, like, a real fascist. He just, you know, wanted, like, freedom for his people. Why I keep that on my book? Because I just think you know what a great man, but well, Cornelia jealousy that was. I'm skeptical about that though, because a lot of fascist guides guys their um, authoritarian ideology behind like wanting freedom for people. That's what gets a lot of people in. Yeah, I knew that. I haven't read it. But I just keep it there as a sign of respect because I think about the struggle through. And, you know, all these people looked up to him. He just wanted, like, freedom. And, you know, the way he was killed, he was just, like, shot. Had ass. He had his face beaten off of acid and he was thrown in a mock grave. And it's like... Yeah. I, I just keep up with uh, the same respect. So, do you have any contentions with um, the core tenets of socialism? Like, um, says you're of the means of production. You know, like... Um, like, worker-owned production, decommodification of capital or whatever. Like, well, do you have I, any... Not, not entirely sure about that, because I, I don't really read myself a lot then. Um, so, it sounds like you're not really sure what socialism or communism is. Yeah, because I'm not. But, so if you're not well-read on socialism or communism, then why uh, are you so privy to assigning, like, traditionalist ideologies to it? What do you mean? It seems Sorry, like you. It seems like you have this preconception that um. Uh, it's, it's because that, it's more. It's more like it's ingrained into. When you think about Western society and what we tell you about, like. Right. Yeah. So, um, if you want to be a true, true leftist. Yeah. Uh, it might be interesting, uh, for you to read up on that. Right. I mean, I mean, I was thinking. Of I mean, uh, I mean, like, well, nihilism. I've got nothing to do with socialism. I'm sorry. I said nihilism. That's got nothing to do with socialism. 
well, nihil socialism is an economic system, and nihilism is a philosophical position. They're not really right. because um, of yeah, because the only ideology I really thought of was nihilism. Yeah, well, that's uh, um, that's a philosophical predis predisposition. That's not really um political. It's not really so a political right. ideology. Yeah, yeah because I, I could get books. Uh, I want to get like. Not really sure what to read. Got any recommendations? Madeline, hmm. recommend a book. Um, Conquest of Bread. That's what um I. She said um Conquest for Bread. The Conquest, Conquest of for bread. bread. It's by Peter Kropotkin. He was a Russian prince who like gave up his throne to like pursue anarchism. <laughs> That's actually what my sister's starting with. It's super no, base. Keep, keep an eye on that one. All right. The, the, thing is, the thing is, like, my main thing is not really like political idea. But, like, I want to read like you know a lot more feminist books. I'm really read, but that's not really like a political. It fits into the political landscape of our times, though. Right. Well, the thing is, like, I want to. I want to read something that was like written by a trans feminist. Again, like I'm not say, saying like all that. You know, you think of feminism now, and you think about like all these tips and I'm just. Oh, I want to read something written by a trans feminist. I mean, there are a lot of um, trans books. Yeah, I just don't uh, know gen many. <laughs> Gender Hurts, a feminist analysis of the politics of trans transgenderism by uh, Shelia Jeffries might be good for you to look into. Sounds based. Yeah, but is, she, is she like a trans ally or is she a two? Because it's not, it's not the movie these days. Well, I mean, it's titled Gender Hurts, and that doesn't sound... But the turf ideology sounds it is pretty um, gender uh, gender centric or like gender... Yeah. I don't know what, what you'd call it. Gender essentialism? Yeah. What, what did you say about Buckwheat School? The struggle for bread. The conquest of bread? Of oh, the conquest for bread. Who, who wrote that one? Kropotkin. Alright, I'll keep an eye out for that one. Alright, it's like the anarcho communist Bible, basically. Why? Like, when this coronavirus is over, uh, I got this little bookshop. Um, there's a few books by Karl Marx. Get those. Fuck yeah. Sounds well, good. Thing, yeah, but the thing is, like, I mostly like classical literature, you know, like Frederick Nietzsche, H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe, you know, Dante's Inferno. Like, it's not really ideology, but those are the things I like reading. Do you want more um, trans feminist books? Yeah, I do actually. I uh, I have another title for you. Wait, what is it? It's called "Excluded: Making Feminist and Queer Movements More Inclusive" by Julia Serrano. Oh. I'll, I'll look into that one. Yeah, another good, another good one. Well, is it, I don't mean to bring up HP Lovecraft, but it's something I remember. To, it's like quite ironic, right? Everyone said that HP Lovecraft the massive anti semite The thing is, he actually married a Jewish woman. That's like quite ironic. When you... Well, like you, you can marry a Jewish woman and like be anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah but another thing is, I saw this documentary, and this is quite because you know everyone says like oh, racist and an anti-Semite and all this. And these were like his biggest followers. And one of them was Jewish. One of them was Indian. And one of them was transgender. I thought like the fucking irony of it when you really think of it. Yeah, I, I guess I just don't um, care much about identity politics. Have you ever read Dante's Inferno? 
Can't say I have. Alright. I haven't read it yet. Basically, I hear it's like um, his inspiration for it. So basically, it's about uh, Dan Say and his journey to hell. And basically, the author, he wrote um, all the people he hated. He wrote like all these uh, little sufferings we would have in hell. It basically was just him holding a grudge against all the people he hated. And I thought. That sounds therapeutic to write. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like. Um, he hated Judas for most because he betrayed Jesus, so he would like have a worst punishment in hell and he would like write it in detail. Jesus. Yeah. That's kinda of badass. Yeah. I mean like he was a strict Catholic at the time, so Alright, I love you. But I don't know much about literature, <laughs> so we may, we may have to move from this topic. Uh, I'm not driving the conversation, of course, uh, but I'm just saying I don't know much about it personally. Well, what else do you want to talk about? What about anime? Uh, I don't really watch anime either, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm very um, anti degenerate. What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do you like the classic? Do I what? Like the classics. Classic anime. Yeah, I don't I just don't really watch much anime. My only um, interests are like video games, politics, and music. Those are like the three. So you haven't got like a top three favorite anime? No, nah, I don't really watch anime. Alright. Well, okay. I'd say like Wait, I did Same watch food, one. Food. Um, so my I watch... favorite movies are like uh, Cowboy Bebop, Helsing Ultimate, and Bazoo. Sure, I watched one anime like one time, and it right. it was uh, Full Metal Alchemist. I mean, I do like that one, but I just it's just really not my thing. But like Helsing Ultimate, it's like it's got fucking everything. It's dark, it's comedic. You know, it's just like fucking. Helsing you know, you is this the video. only Ooh. good anime. What which is Helsing? I love that show. Helsing. What, health and ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. I just fucking got everything. So, I... the My only exposure in, like, recent year, Like, in the last, like, year of my life... Like, my ex-girlfriend really loved anime. And I would watch it with her. And, like, it would all be so alien to me. Because I just didn't get anime, like, culture. Like, one of the characters would be like... Yeah, they're opening, like, a portal or something. And I would just, like, do something. <laughs> And, like, get it because she was immersed in anime culture and I wasn't. And it, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... What about, like, what hmm? about, like in anime? What about what? Like, hyper-violence in anime. You know, over-the-top violence. Do you, do you like that sort of thing? I mean, again, I don't really watch much anime, but violence is okay in media. That's my take. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you, if you like watching like really bloody anime, fucking Bazook, Helsing Ultimate, and Elephant Lead, if you like fucking. <laughs> um, I do not watch my anime. I mean, like, an Elephant Lead was pretty much a part where you punch a guy in the chest and his fucking heart comes out and he lands on someone else's chest. It's like, fuck it. Damn. Damn. All right, you guys. Are we like coming down to the end, or? I do not. Um, th I don't know. I guess media isn't like my uh, strong suit. Like books and anime, that's not really uh, my thing. I want to stream being on. Oh, oh we've been streaming for three and a half hours. <laughs> how long have? I do you know how long I've been here? No. The three of us have been talking for two hours. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. Time flies. Yeah. Madeline, what's your hottest take? Um, I don't know what my hottest take is. When I said sex is a social construct as well, people got mad. So maybe that. Wait, when you said what? <laughs> Well, that sex is technically a social construct as well as gender. 
I mean, true. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's, it's virginity is so true. Yes. Because I'm sad to say that I am. Well, like... Is what a social construct? Virginity. I'm sorry, one more time. Virginity. Oh, yeah, virginity is definitely a social construct. Like, there's, like, the hymen, I get, but even then, like, you can have sex without breaking your hymen, and, like... You can break your hymen without having sex. Like, virginity is definitely a social construct. And if you have, like, a sexual interaction without intercourse, like... And also, like, that that whole idea originated as, like, a purity standard for women. Right, yeah. To, like, oppress them. Yeah. Yeah, I I got an interesting thing about that, right? So, So say you're trans, and you've never, like, had intercourse with your penis... I and mean, then you have gender reassignment surgery, I and mean, then someone has intercourse with you. Does that still technically make you a virgin because you never used your penis before? No. Well, well what then? Because you're literally getting your vagina fucked. Like, you're not a virgin yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a woman. Yeah, but, then, yeah, but then some people would say, oh, well, you're still technically male and you never used your penis, so you're still technically a virgin and shit like that. Okay, That's well, just fuck. Transphobia, you're... though. Yeah, yeah, you're a woman. But I'm just saying, that's how some people... They're wrong. Well, those are unbased yeah. and cringe. Yeah, they are. <laughs> unbased and cringe. The <laughs> worst two designations. The worst they things. Would be. Except for... um, Woke school. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> To say that one game cancelled, so what is Man. woke school? Woke school. A woke like a yeah. purity obsessed leftist. No. Nah. Yeah. But what what are we even? I mean, I consider myself, I guess, a dirtbag leftist. I don't know. I'm part of the SJW bag left, so I mean I'd say I'm a SJW bag. I don't really like that weed much because it gets bad. I'm like a combo of an edgy dirtbag and a SJW, like, woke lit, I guess. Yeah, I've got, I've got all the best attributes of every ideology. Right. <laughs> Do you think SJW is, like, a dirty weed? Um, I mean, I think it's been co-opted as a dirty word by the right, but I don't really care because I literally am a social justice warrior, so... It's also like a dead. It's kind of a dead thing. Like people, who, people get made fun of for still calling people SJWs now. The right has moved on from that. Yeah, now they're like degenerate. I guess I don't know. <laughs> they just skipped to calling us degenerates. Mask off. <laughs> So, like, um, can we do another stream? Somewhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. Great. I want to do, like, big debates eventually. I want to do, like, a tankies versus anarchists debate, like, with multiple people on teams and stuff. I want to do a bunch of things. Well, what kind of debate do you want to have, then? Like, like what question? Well, mm-hmm. like, I, I'm just talking about, like, my ideas for the future of the channel. Right. So Here, you guys have... got so so you two haven't got anything against me because I used to be a fascist. No, no, no. I, I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but it's just like you know some people. It's like, yeah, I know some like cancelly types will do that, but I don't really consider myself associated with them. Yeah. All right, I have a debate topic, Madeline. All right. Okay. The dog pill. <laughs> What's the dog? Sorry, I'm. I, don't... I never hear the dog. Do- the dog pill is the truth, my friend. Of oh, truth. The one true truth. <laughs> so okay, the dog pill is like, and I the idea that like women just want to fuck dogs. Ah. And um, it's also the holy bible. <laughs> Oh, 
I didn't really interesting. So, um, Maddie, do you have any counter arguments? Um, the cat pill. Oh shit! You didn't expect me to go there, did you? <laughs> well, define the cat pill. Nya nya. That's that's the definition. Fuck. <laughs> I just, I just thought of a pill if you want to. You, you probably like it. It's called the Snow Bunny. <laughs> you have a Snow Bunny pill. It's like secretly every right one. True. <laughs> like, whether you're trans or cis. Like. Yeah, true. Unquestionably. <laughs> All right, guys. God damn it. We've been talking for like two and a half hours now. <laughs> well, I um, I love talking. So I love talking, but I love talking, but here's my fucking <laughs> huh? I love talking, but here's my throat. <laughs> yeah, I I will probably be like wrapping up soon. Yeah. All right, sure. Are we calling it quits? Yeah, unless we so have you're still any gonna further. Put yeah. Oh, dude, just one more question. Well, when about is this going on? Because because I really want to watch this again. All right. Um. It's going on to. I think she said it's going on tomorrow. You. Yeah. Can... Our our yeah. clip will go up tomorrow, and then this one like well, this trio one like the day after. Well, Damn, what's I'm gonna like? have to wait to analyze my rhetoric. <laughs> Do you actually do that? No, I, I don't. <laughs> okay, the first time we streamed together, or like I streamed with you, I went back and like looked at like the first few seconds of the clip just to see how like my voice sounded, like as an insecure thing. Mm -hmm. But since I haven't like I don't like watch the clips to go back and like because this is super like frivolous to me. Um, right. so yeah, it's casual. It's not, there's no not really a need to analyze your rhetoric here. Yeah. Well, anyway, so, if we're closing out soon, um, goodbye, stream. I love you. Trans rights. Both of you, yeah. I, I love you both very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Love all around. Yeah.